National Football League. And it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Bucks and the reigning NFC champs under the lights on Sunday night. the Packers offense now onto the field and they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia it's Geno Smith and it'll be interesting to see pretty early in this one exactly where his head is because the best quarterback shake off performances like he had last week way too many interceptions didn't throw a touchdown pass team lost the game Let's see if he can bounce back and get things going in the right direction he'll be trying to forget those three picks as you noted now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Now Gino on first down. Pass caught. It's Romeo Dobbs. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. The Packers at two and three here to begin the new season. And they come in losers at two straight, so trying to turn things around here. And you just mentioned two straight, and when you're talking about two games, that's nothing to panic about. They feel like they've been a little bit unlucky in the last couple. This is a club that's more than capable of turning things around, and I expect them to play really well here. Smith on first down. He's going to rifle one deep left side, and it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. On second down, it's Jones. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down, Smith going deep here for Landry. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They'll be led out by Gardner Minshew, six-round selection in 2019 out of Washington State. And there was a positive in last week's loss. No interceptions thrown by him. But he only threw one touchdown pass, and you know he wants that to improve. He might even consider that as part of the reason that they couldn't take the win last time out. I believe we'll see a more aggressive version of him this week whenever they're nearing the end zone. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. And we see the emphasis early here. Get your star receiver involved able to do it successfully. Not a bad start to begin with, that's for sure. And to me, this play says, our guy is better than your guys. 
because you know a player of his stature, he won't just be single covered all game long. He's going to involve multiple people, and right away, they told the other team, guess what? He's just better. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Again, Minshew looking to throw. Forced out to his left. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Back deep, Jarvis Landry. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And they are a game under 500 now following the loss a week ago, and this is a team, Charles, that just has not been able to string victories together. Yeah, they're certainly going the wrong way, aren't they? Because it looked like they have things pointing in the right direction, but now they've lost two straight, and that means this game is vital, extremely important, because if they fall two games below 500, the road back into playoff contention, awfully difficult. And this will be a Packers first down as he's able to get this up to the 37-yard line. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Smith. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. An inside give to Jones. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Well, certainly some teams are not intimidated by down and distance on defense, are they? Third and very long? <laughs> Let's go get this guy again. Big-time pressure. Here's Pat O'Donnell on now to punt it away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. It's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field.
They keep it with Fournette on first down. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Here's Minshew. Here's a quick pass. He's got Chris Godwin. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll manage to pick up about four in second down. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Out of the gun is Minshew. Throw across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darnell Savage. And the Packers are going to have it here just past the 25. But I think this will run awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. From the 30 on second down, Smith. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. From the gun on third down, Smith. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards, first down, Packers. And they'll use him out in the backfield and sometimes quite a bit. They're just trying to get him touches any way they can. Four catches a week ago, there's another one right there. On first down, Smith. Brought in by Dobbs on the comeback round. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now a first down carry by Jones. Down to the 42, second down. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Again, it's Jones. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Now Gino. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he's going to have the Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Up the middle, Jones dances by at the 20. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 
47 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower center gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Now a handoff. Running left is Jones. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. And it's caught. And it's a Packers touchdown. Isaiah McKenzie. His second touchdown on the season. And the Packers post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Now, after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. From the end zone, here comes Jalen Darden. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone, and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. First catch there for Evans, good enough for a first down. He's been the forgotten man in this first half, not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because at all. those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch, it's a first down. Minshew, first and 10. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. It'll be Minshew again. Buying time to his left. Second quarter action, 156 remaining. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. Open man is Jalen Darden. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 40. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Now Minshew on first and ten. And that is incomplete here. So second down and ten. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Open man has got one. It's complete. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Throwing on first down is Minshew. They'll swing this out to Fournette. And able.
able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now Minshew. Now he's got it. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. They'll try to punch it in before that. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Leonard Fournette with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. And the Bucs are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. So a late touchdown here just before the half, and that obviously changes the dynamic of this game. Yeah, in a couple of ways, partner, because they've been shut out up until this point. So now at least they go into the locker room, and Uncle Mo may be creeping over to their side to talk to them a little bit. And second, they're right back in the football game, an extra point away from tying things up. An extra point splits the uprights, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. The Packer offense heading back for one final first half drive. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it. And we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Smith. That is caught. It's the tight end, Tunyon. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A shotgun snap for Smith. Over the middle complete. It's McKenzie. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will do it for this first half. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. This will be fielded inside the five. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Bucs ready to go here to begin the third quarter. As they begin their second half here, Charles, offensively, you know, not where they want to be, obviously. They're losing in this ball game but very much within striking distance. We'll see what adjustments they make in the second half. Is that the old glass half full, half empty type of a deal? Which way do you want to look at it? Because you're right, they're down on the scoreboard, but they're definitely opportunities now because if they want to go ahead and get going in this one, get back to the running game. I think there's going to be some places to go with it, and I think the offensive line will appreciate the chance to fire out and hit people. That's a good point because they virtually had nothing going in the ground game in that first half. 
Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Minshew sets to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. You know, in these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Minshew. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. A call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So here are the Packers now to take over. They lost two straight coming in, but good news for them right now. They've got the lead and the football. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. From the gun, here's Smith. Got his man complete over the middle. That's McKenzie. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Smith now to throw. He's going to look deep now for Landry. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. Pulled in at the 24. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. First target, first catch, and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Minshew with a give to Fournette, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards, second down coming up. Second and seven, Minshew. And Blake has it over the middle. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 37. It's an 11-yard pickup. Thought they'd run it on third and one. Not the case. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. They go back to the ground now with Fournette, and he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. 
Throwing on second and eight. Minshew over the middle to Evans. And they'll work this down inside the 30. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to bring the end of the first down. Receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Here's Minshew. And he'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line. Ball at the 23, second and eight. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Multiple defenders in there to bring him down as this quarter comes to an end. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up four. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And his kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Out of the gun, Smith. He's going to float this one deep right side. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. They juked him. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now the Buccaneers' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. To throw again on second down. Minshew dumps it off to Fournette. Just a gain of a couple there. And that'll leave him with a third and two. They'll go play action here with Minshew. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple players getting home there, and it's a loss of two on the sack. Well, Parker, I would say just avoid play action. But that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest.
Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to kick it away. Now Landry. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, nine on the return. The Packers ready to take over offensively. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. On first down, it's Smith. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They'll go again to Jones. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. The give is to Jones. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Smith on third down. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And he's going to have a Packers first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. Good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. The Smith's throw going to be caught by McKenzie. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. They go back to the ground with Jones. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. A give to Jones. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. A field goal from this spot would be 51 yards. They'll try to move it closer on third down. This is Jones. And I don't think he got there, no. She's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. So a big one coming now for Cairo Santos. This to take the lead here in the final minute. Santos' kick is up and through. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there, gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. So now the Bucks down by a field goal. At time, a huge factor. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now Minshew. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Here's Minshew. Out route and the ball is caught by Godwin. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. 
Minshew. And that'll be caught by Garden. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Back to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And Minshew going to get him to the line quickly. He'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. 